spin-off. Of it's that, a spin-off. Kind of. It's a metamorphosis, an evolution of the true facts thing. Level up. Yeah, it's a level up. Um, and it's pretty unique. We've looked into um, whether anybody else has kind of done something like this, and no one really has that we've found. Not to the extent that we're doing it. Not There's to the extent that we're doing close it. Close things, but nothing really too much. So what this is, is um, it's, uh, it's literally uh, Urban Dictionary um, excerpts, okay? Like some of the funniest things that you, you can see on Urban Dictionary. But it's spun up in a way where we bring it to you with class and educational purposes. Yes, we'll actually be handing over the stream to two yes. of our very close cohorts. In yes, Pride absolutely. Um, can portray this a little better than we can. Yes, with a little bit more elegant. Absolutely. Um, we the, the 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 nature of this program is way too classy that even we cannot um, be the ones to bring you the information. So we've brought in two people, um, two guys. Um, they're great guys. Uh, they're from overseas. Um, and they're actually going to run this segment for us. And, um, you know, we're going to kind of be in the background here. Um, but this new segment is called Excerpts from Urban Dictionary. And, um, I, don't, I mean, I don't know about you, Justin, but uh, should we get ready to hand it over to these two guys? Yeah, I think they're just about ready. Let's go ahead and give them a shot, see if they can do it twice in a row. All right, guys. So we will see you on the other side. Have a good one. And we'll be right back. Oh yes, hello, it's great to be here with everybody once again. Welcome to the second installment of the old excerpts from Urban Dictionary. Hello. Oh yes, the old Urban Dictionary. Oh yes, it's great to be here with my cohort here. And everybody, we're very, very excited to bring you this new, this new uh, edition of the Urban Dictionary. All right. So basically, just to catch everyone up on how we've been. So last night we debuted, of course, yes. and um, we brought you the infinite, lovely meaning of the old Cleveland Steamer. Ah, uh, still one of my favorites. It's a, it's quite the classic, the old Cleveland Steamer. And, uh, of course, then Justin. Uh, d decided to submit a word himself, the old armpit choo-choo, which was apparently a thing which I was unaware of, so even I was learning quite a bit here. There was a... Hello, sir, you over there? Co-host? Sorry about close. that, I'm not used to these, uh, this setup they've, uh, provided us here, i just figuring it all out, but yes, the armpit choo-choo, one of my favorites to this day. Oh, yes, the old armpit choo-choo yes. tends to tends to make things quite exciting of course when you're you're ramming your your male your male rod shaft into the of armpit. Glory. Yes, the shaft of glory right into the armpit of your loved one. Nothing screams I love you like a armpit full of man seed. Yes, now we would do want to do a disclaimer here first. When doing the armpit choo choo Make sure she's at least mostly shaved beforehand, because you don't want rug burn in a place where you shouldn't have it. Absolutely, you know, the, ever since the invention of internet porn, unfortunately, the, 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 the amount of occurrences that chafing has been noted in uh, local health facilities has actually gone up by over 250%, which is quite the, monstros <laughs> quite the monstrosity. <laughs> oh, absolutely, I've been there once myself, it happens. But, uh, people, we do want to give you this campaign we've started. Don't worry about taking care of yourself. You know, just go ahead, find you a woman who's into the old Cleveland steamer or the armpit choo-choo. Stop the tug. Find a rug, son. Oh, absolutely, yes. And, you know, use your brain. Use anti-chafing methods at all times. Take care of yourself and your own <laughs> personal health in the process of all yes, this. Yes, I mean, personally, I have a uh, bottle of cortisone tin right here. You never know what's going to happen. Of course, so with, with all that said, and, and of course, uh, all the education that lays before us, do you think we should move forward with our newest word that we will read out of the Encyclopedia Britannica of Urban Dictionary? <laughs> yes, let's go. Yes, of course. Let's, of let's course. get ready to go here, okay. So our first entry comes wave tonight. Uh, it is called the Penis Boat. Not sure if you're 
I'm sorry, Cobalt over there, have you, have you ever heard of the penis boat? Now, if, if I'm thinking right, the penis boat, the original, um, the original creation of the word was actually derived from an old Latin term. Now, there was these uh, indi indigenous, indigenous tribes to South America or Middle America, I forget which, and they at some point were just blessed with such large penises that they couldn't they couldn't do anything on land, so they had to take to the waters, and the, they used it to float around and as transportation. Yes, yes, of course. Actually, it was uh, for the first time. You know, the old the old folklore, of course, of the penis boat dates back to even the seventeenth the seventeenth hundreds, the yes. uh, which I believe is the seventeenth or eighteenth century. I'm not quite sure on that. I have to double check my, the, uh, my I factoids. There. I, I believe it's the eighteenth century. Eighteenth century, of course. Yes, so, so the first actual public documentation of the penis boat being a thing was actually in 1914 when the Titanic took to the waters and sank in that unfortunate oh. iceberg accident. Sir William McCasey, of course, was a survivor of the old, uh, the old Titanic sinkings and by uh, way a true of, gentleman himself. Yes, absolutely, one of our, one of our finest gentlemen from from the old Isle of England, but uh, 16th century, of course, says Batusai. What a lovely gentleman sitting there in the chat. What a, what a nice young lad he is, apparently, helping us out with some of the information. But uh, anyway, the old Titanic thing, I believe it was 1914, maybe 1918, I can't remember. But uh, anyway, Sir William Casey survived the old, the old event by using his penis boat, of course. So what is a penis boat? Exactly what is it? What is the scientific or term and definition and of course I will do a reading here describing what a penis boat is and I will follow it up by using it in a sentence of course for your comprehension. So the penis boat is when the penis of a man floats to the top of the water in a bath, pool, hot tub, any sort of body of water that the man may be submerged in. As used in a sentence, I was sitting in the bathtub trying to relax and my penis boat popped up. And oh, it's always lovely. It's like a love it's like an extra little buddy popping up to say hello, that's what the penis boat is, of course. Do you have any thoughts on the old penis boat there, Cohort? Well, you know, we've all been all of our uh, male members, uh, no pun intended, have been experienced experienced this at one point or another. You're just floating in the bathtub, taking a nice bubble bath, you know, getting rid of the sweat from the day's labor, and it just sometimes happens. It just floats to the top. Uh, no, I'm sure we've all seen it, so we we know a little bit what's going on. But you do need to be careful when the when the boat floats, if I could say it that way. Whatever floats your boat has a Whatever whole new meaning, of course. One of no, my favorite absolutely. things from the now, English language, of course. Whenever your boat floats, it's going to go straight up as the buoyancy uh, comes sta stabilizes. And you need to make sure there's nothing in your way that could go down your urethra. Just a little safety guideline for you all. Absolutely, absolutely. It would be lovely. Oh, look at this. Apparently one of the founding members of this very channel that we're special guest starring on is here with us the old Egan 20. Hello. Oh, Sir Egan, yes. Hello, sir. We're all waving at you with a nice little tip of the hat. Oh, the old macho man, yes, I believe he's known for such acts as saying, oh, yeah, and space is the place, of course. Yes, and uh, maybe farting on something, street Something about an elbow drop off the top rope. I'm not quite sure what all that fuss is about. We sit here and play rugby, of course. And yes, a man's sport. A man's sport. It's nothing like that pansy football with pads and everything. The, the I'm referring to the American football, not oh, what they call course, soccer. the Yankee sport of football. Quite yes. the, quite the yeah. inferior sport, of course. And then there's it is. Cricket. Now, I do, enjoy, I do enjoy the Yankee sport because it's a little more tactful than rugby, but there's nothing better than just a group of men slugging it out on the rugby field, beating the absolute snot out of each other. Oh, yes, of course. So here we are. And uh, something I'd love to say about the, the lovely sport of rugby and why it is quite superior to not just American football, but all <laughs> sports in general. I, it, rugby is a big game of smear the queer. And, and, and back in the old schoolyard days, back <laughs> yes. in pre-war times, we all would run and gallop about in all the equipment that we would play on in the old playground, but no game was more fun than smashing into old Paul Glassworth, the, the oh, queer Paul of Glassworth. the fourth grade. Yes, we all played smear the queer, and we had a jolly old time just beating the shit out of that little fucker. 
Now, unfortunately, I did find out something. I actually ran into him a few months ago. Oh, did you? And yeah, we were reminiscing over a beer, and we apologized for how we acted as children. But you know, when I first met him, I wanted him to remember the good old days, so we were in the middle of the street. It was a nice, uh, beautiful cobblestone path leading into the pub, and out of nowhere, I jumped out of a first, uh, first story window. Smashed was through it the first window. Story? Of course it was. I yeah, yeah, it was. Straight, I'm not gonna nothing too crazy. And I smashed through there, tackled him and said, Ha, we'll smear the queer again. Now unfortunately we need to be careful because he is somewhat of a masochist today. And the way I landed was on top of him. And let's just say he gave me the old penis boat for a second. I felt it tug on my leg. Oh, God, he's quite a poor glass with his grown quite a bit, hasn't he? He's become yeah, quite oh, a man as he's yes. grown up here. I was in the hospital for two days. It broke my femur. Oh, sounds like a man we may want to, uh... Sounds like a man we may want to, uh, possibly... Recruit for next word and entry into the Urban Dictionary here. Got a quite, yes. the, quite the new, uh, quite the new insert. Or is everybody in the, uh... The channel of chat ready for the newest word that we will be posting and covering here for the for the channel. And uh, of course, let me let me just do a quick run through of why we do this. The English language is an absolutely lovely language that we've all spoken and learned through all of our years. It's very vast and expensive. Yes, it Never is. It's super vast, and of course, we we hear we we see the how much that the. The, the the language is evolving, and we want to keep you on the front lines, of course. There's nothing worse than being caught in a conversation out in the general public, and somebody refers to something that you have no idea about, so we're here to educate you, to keep you current on the times, I guess you could say current on the events, just so you know what's happening. In the we world. want you sitting on the front row of the cutting edge of the English language. So with that, let me move on to the next word, of course. Here we are. Yes. The next word is Penis Brigade, of course. Uh, oh, tonight, the old Penis Brigade. Tonight's theme, of course, being the male genitalia, of course. But many, many entries into the Urban Dictionary cover many things with the male genitalia as the leading word. So here we are with the Penis Brigade. And what is a Penis Brigade? What does it entail? And that's why I'm here to educate you, of course. And, of course, Paul Glassworth sounds like a very fine young gentleman that we want, may want to... Uh, invite to our penis brigade the next time that we try to do this, of course. Yes, yes, it's so, a hell of a time. So what is a penis brigade? It's, uh, it appears... This is read straight out of the Urban Dictionary word for word, of course. We do not change the wording, we do not change the phrasing. It comes at you as raw and as simple as possible. So, when a dude is banging a chick, and at the cusp of his orgasm, he yells, Penis Brigade! At which point, several other dudes run into the room and proceed to masturbate all over the woman's body like a bukkake-like manner. <laughs> well, I guess you could say she got herself into a sticky situation. Yes, of course. And Hopefully she wasn't a, a little too salty at the end of that. And whenever you bring in the word bukkake-like manner, you know that it is a very serious act, of course. Now, there is one thing I do want to mention. The Prenus Brigade, if you all ever want to try this, you need to be prepared. It is an organized event that you need more than about three or four people for. If you don't have them, it just gets a little fetishy and weird. Yes, absolutely. Make sure you have a very close company of friends when you do this. Otherwise, as my cohort, of course, said, it could get a little strange and weird. Yes. So, as used in a sentence, of course, Dave and his friends from home gave this drunk freshman quite the penis brigade on Friday night. It was funny as hell and everyone laughed like a bastard. Well, I hope so. That's good. They're keeping humor in the bed. There's one, If there's one thing you don't want to lose, it's humor in the bedroom. It's not all about love. and It is. You want to love the person, but you need to keep it funny. That's how a good relationship goes. So, boys, girls, if you ever want to spice up your love life a little bit, just go ahead and introduce a penis brigade at the end of it every once in a while. Absolutely. And, of course, it would pick up this... Th it would keep something, you know, women always complaining because, you know, the, the lovely ladies of our lives that we all yes. need, you know, they always like to find something to nag about. And one of the most common instances of this is, of course, when they say, oh, things are stale in the old bedroom. You know, oh, we need to do something fresh to reinvigorate our sexual yes, luscious yes. appetites and spice it up. What is more sexually different? 
than screaming penis brigade in the middle of your intercourse with your lovely bird in your bed and then 12 of your closest cohorts come in there male genitalia in hand and then they begin in a bukkake like manner to just just come all over her I mean this is you know a bit Getting a little too into the moment over here, cohort. You might have yes, to take yes. over for a moment. Of oh, okay. Well, you know, like he said, the penis. You need to spice up things in the bedroom, and there's nothing more than the spice of life than the penis brigade. And to answer your question, Egan Twenty, I believe, does the female need to know beforehand? Now, there's two different ways that you can approach this situation. Now, if you want to make sure it's a safe environment, then sure, go ahead and tell her, ask her for her permission. But you're not really keeping it a surprise. They want, women want a man who is spontaneous. I mean, just out of nowhere, out of the blue, just give her something she'll love. So, for the first one, I would recommend keeping it a little bit of a secret, and at the end, like the, like it says, just yell penis brigade and have 12 to 36 of your friends come in. After that, if she didn't like it and you want to try it again, just ask her permission. But for the first one, keep it a surprise. Yes, of course. And just as a quick disclaimer for you know our own protection, we will always say that use our advice in the most productive way possible. Because if any possible misstep along the way could potentially end a relationship or quite even crush your dreams, destroy families, um, just you know take everything we say and put it in context in the best way that it fits for your life, of course, because not every woman is all into 12 of her significant other's closest cohorts masturbating all over her, of course. So, yes. Take, you know, just a little disclaimer there, of course. You know, we're, we're all here to have a good time, you know. Oh, oh, Egan, I actually have the answer for your uh, latest question. Is a high number of males better, or maybe multiple females? Now, it wouldn't be a penis brigade by definition if there were females. And the problem with that, we've done studies, we've tested this out ex expansively, and women just take too long to reach the peak of an orgasm. Now, if you are going to set it up for women, you want to do just women, because they can have multiple orgasms. Try to get squirters, they're a little bit better. But you want males for it. Air of course, yes, because when you add one, just one extra female to the mix, it becomes an orgy. That is the scientific term for the situation, of course. One female must be present at all times for it to remain a true tr penis brigade, if we're yes, talking about yes. the original term, of course. So, with that, ladies and gentlemen, we, we bid you a farewell. We appreciate your supporting experts of the Urban Dictionary as we bring our second episode to a close, and we hope everybody might be a little more smarter, a little more quite you know, tighter on the old pants waist, if you will, you know, quite a little sharper on the old English language. And we all love having you here, so with that, we bid you a farewell. Any closing statements, cohort? Um, I just, like you said earlier, just to dis have a disclaimer, if you try anything of this, do it of your own free will and not because we told you to. Multiple people like different things, not everybody likes the same thing, so use our advice with caution. Now I think it's about time we turn it over to the, uh, the stars of this stream, let them get on with their little thing, don't you say? Yes, yes, of course, I believe that they are waiting patiently for us to hand things back to them. So with that, we bid you a farewell. Farewell, everyone. Farewell. And with that, we would like to thank our English friends for sharing that very, very intense information. Um, God, that yeah, was yeah. Uh, that those was guys, that was very, very enlightening. Yeah, those guys they bring a lot of uh, useful useful uh, terms to us. They really do. The education is off the charts. I mean, uh, uh, I mean, and penis brigade. Yeah, what? You're, like, you're that sounds like an army, right? Exactly, right? You think it's an army of dudes just walk around? But hey, we're learning some history here. We learned about the uh, origin of the penis boat uh, coming from the Titanic. Where else would you get that information? Absolutely. I mean, it, it all sounded credible. All this information just sounded like straight out of a textbook. I mean, I'm telling you what, England is miles ahead of me when it comes oh, to the English yeah, language, yeah. man. That was awesome, guys. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, so, stepping out of character now, um, 
that was our second edition of the um, excerpts of the Urban Dictionary. Of course, we did our first episode last night, and we got insanely cool feedback from everybody that got a chance um, to to watch that. Um, and I've been speaking closely with Justin. We have um, a lot of really, really cool um, ideas. We're going to expand this thing. I think we're going to keep doing it. Um, I think it's going to be like our uh, our calling card, maybe, if you will. Like right next there with our Arma RPs that we do that we absolutely love. Um, which, by the way, if you guys haven't seen our Arma RP from last night, the Arnold thing, fucking top of the line stuff. RP gold, like... I mean, it's up there with our chimichanga work. It's, uh, it was some of our best stuff. So, um, for those of you guys that know of our Arma presence and love our RPs, make sure to check out the Arnold's, both the first and second one. The first one's the best, obviously, but, oh yeah, um, make sure to watch them all. It's, they're so good. It was so good. I had so much fun doing that shit last night. Oh yeah, man, it was great. And I'm going to be loving these new uh, Urban Dictionaries coming up. That's one of my favorite things coming to the channel. Yeah, and this thing was my brainchild. And, and with Justin, I'm expanding this thing. We're going to we're gonna bring a lot more stuff to the Urban Dictionary. Um, and not like to the actual website itself, but to like our little mini-series of reading it as English gentlemen. Um, yeah. Oh, gonna, yeah. Because that, that, that's definitely, they're going on YouTube. Mm -hmm. They're going to become more scripted. And yeah, yeah. Um, there's going to be a lot more prep work that goes into them. They're not going to be so, like, ad libs Because right now we're just ad libbing it. We're Justin, just making shit up. We're making shit up. Right we're, not, yeah, we're not, like, following a script. We're just finding the words and we're just winging it. Oh, and, my God. I just found the best thing ever on the internet. What's that? This girl posted on Twitter.